two Didcot Argos. Argos and Sainsbury's. Indeed. Do you know oh. the way down? Head north? Yes. Okay. North is that way. For some reason, men always know which way the compass is, and I don't know why that is. We're so Hello, good mate. at everything, but. <laughs> <laughs> No, an ex-boyfriend of mine, we drove all the way yeah. to Germany on his nose. <laughs> and really, women, you know, if you're jealous of us being so amazing, you know, and why there's this big controversy that about men entering women's sports, any sport, you name it, even ones that don't require strength like chess, archery, shooting, doesn't matter what it is. We're amazing, yeah. <laughs> and you have yourselves to blame because in non-rapey countries, so you can forget India, uh, Islamistan, and um, where well, there's ra other rapey countries. You oh. know, you know who you are, right? Where countries where the women choose who Do they who they marry straight uh, right here, right here. Do beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah. in countries where women. Uh, have chosen who they marry for centuries as part of the culture, right? You have actually bred a pedigree of men to be absolutely excellent. We have to be charming, we have to be intelligent, we have to be good conversationalists, we have to be humorous, we have to be funny, but we have to be absolutely brilliant at everything. So I make no apologies for how amazing men are because women bred us this way. And I may be laughing, but I'm actually agreeing with him. <laughs> it's called um, an e evolution, a biological evolutionary stable strategy (ESS). Look it up, folks. Um, yeah. And the problem with uh, men from rapey countries is you either pay a dowry and just choose who you marry, so the woman has no choice, or it's arranged already so the woman doesn't have a choice or it's rapey so the woman doesn't have a choice and what that does is it builds a pedigree of extremely low quality men indeed and that's why cultures in different countries are different i could tell you about the biology of men and women and how it's so completely different but i'd probably get hounded by the woke mob <laughs> okay what well, well, i'm up for it <laughs> well, I mean, okay, your eyes, for instance, okay? Yes. Uh, men, or I should say testosterone, gives you more rods in your eyes, and oestrogen gives you which more are, in Which your is eyes. night sight. You yeah. probably noticed if you're okay. male, you can actually see colour under a full moon if you're white, because white men's eyes are 20% larger than black men's eyes, interestingly. Well, if you want to test it out, just look at the stars at night time. Yeah. Okay, a man can look directly at the star and see it pinpoint sharp. Yeah. A woman, though, has to look slightly to the right or to the left. Oh. And then, then it becomes into focus, but if she looks directly at it, it disappears. Because she's got more cones in her eyes. And we could even look directly at, you know, faint clusters like the Pleiades or the Andromeda Galaxy, two million light years away. I can tell the colours of the stars, whether they're red, white or blue. Wow. Or yellow. <laughs> they're all white to me. <laughs> wow. Because you don't have the rods and the resolution in the fovea. Yeah. So basically, men are seeing, like better than any phone like I've tried photographing the stars and it's nothing like how I see it but Directions? oh oh my god uh, left I <sighs> don't take very well to high-pitched noises which is why they can't stand women go screaming at them no they have to walk away especially if there's no information in the talk if it's something they all well, already heard they don't want to hear it again yeah the men are looking for Yeah. They switch off. We will zone out and then we'll be accused of, you're not listening to me. Well, yeah. hang on a minute. You had like a waffle of zero information for two hours and you sprinkled one factoid in. We're not going to spot that right here. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing we want to hear from women is problems. Now, the whole point of women is to cause problems for men. 
So we love all that. We love it because you bred us that way. Because they want to fix it. Yeah, because we think, oh, Guess oh, 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 oh a problem. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I, 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 I can process problems, visualize a solution, conceptualize every single thing I need to procure to solve that problem and then fix it myself or know, know someone else who can fix it. We are so simple when it comes to that. And men also don't like to have the same problem the next day. Like, if you've got a problem today, we want that over tomorrow. We, we don't want to hear about a problem that was spoken about yesterday. It's got to be over today. But you must make, kind of like, <laughs> you've got to help women as well because yeah. they have to emote. They have to show their feelings. And I'm afraid that men think a lot, but women feel a lot. <laughs> I know, but that's what? the way we that? And that's why you love us so much. <laughs> because we feel, and that's our nature, I'm afraid. So you have to put up with it. <laughs> Gosh, what a ghastly way to experience consciousness. Oh, oh straight on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was awful B roll because it didn't focus. I've had emotions, um, and I label them up down or sideways you know so if you're feeling better than before it's up if you're feeling worse than before it's down and if you're feeling slightly different to before but it's not better or worse then it's a sideways <laughs> and that's about it did cart this is the bit that I didn't film um, much of is outside of the town center it's all mortgage deserts all of this, this, this is pretty much what Didcot is residentially. Just identical red brick financial products. That's all that Didcot is. Ugh. Oh no, I can I say, say that, yeah, where I'm parked now is, um, I was working in the area and I just had a rotation. I had about nine different places I'd park that you've probably seen in my videos. and. I just used to rotate about nine of them over a seven day period so that so people observing me would never see a pattern. Oh, what a challenge for a woman driver. You got a six foot wide vehicle and six foot six wide road. Well done, camper van K. Yes. So regular viewers of the show will remember this, the Orchard Centre. This is pretty much the only the nice part of Didcot. Like, oh, railway museum. Oh, oh. Where am I going? Anywhere. Oh. Yeah, certainly taking it out on me at my age, doing all that physical work and all that walking. I'm looking forward to getting my van running again. Oh. <sighs> which, we'll solve it, think. Mm, which brings us to the plot why we're at Argos. Hey Dan, all right? Yes? Yes, yeah, he's got it. Yeah. Got it. And what were you interested in? Batteries. Batteries. Now, I won't ask why a lady needs batteries for anything. Light. And that's Campervan Kay's story, and she's sticking to it. I'm a good girl. <laughs> so this is the village of Harwell, and I wanted to take Campervan Kay to this pub on the corner, the heart of Hartwell. We had a great conversation on the drive down here, which is unpublishable on YouTube. But just go to bitshoot.com and you could hear other people having chats like that. Huge handbag to take into a shop, into a pub. What have you got in there that, that you need? My diary, my purse, uh, I've got my um, safe alarm. <laughs> right, right. I've got a pen knife. <laughs> you don't need, don't need any of that, do you, Kay? No, I guess right, not. Right, put it back, but, put it back. <laughs> let me get these out. Phone. That's enough. Which one? Which one? <laughs> yeah. Who has more than one phone? I'm a drug dealer. <laughs> My phone's got two SIMs and I've still only got one number on it. Is it that one? Ah, dear. Of course, Camper Van K has the same screensaver on two separate phones, so she can't tell the difference. How female is I that, do. folks? <laughs> oh, God. Oh. So you've already seen that pretty little house. 
and there's the pub. Five minutes later. Are you ready? You ready? She's ready. And I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yes, a camper van K is struck by the beams. And so camper van K is having the sausages, and I'm going for the char grilled eight ounce ribeye steak. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love the colour and exposure in that shot. Yeah, so. Oh, and there's the um, thumbnail. Yeah. I was just looking at camembert, garlic, toasted ciabatta bread for starter. Cheers, Campervan K. Marbeck. Mm. Didn't you get yourself a bottle? Oh, how common. You can't drink out of a bottle at a restaurant. Describe your starter there, Campervan K. Well, a little... It's a bit, needs a little bit of greenery, doesn't it? Well, that's a rubbish description. And there's my Malbec, and I've got camembert, cranberry, and ciabatta bread. Mmm. Mm. Lovely ceiling. This isn't just food. This is pub restaurant food in Oxfordshire. Camper van K there's going for the sausage and mash with peas. Well, I'm having the eight ounce ribeye steak with peppercorn sauce, chips and vegetables. Nice. <laughs> After a lot of chatting, thank you. Oh yeah, about conversations that can't be filmed on YouTube. The dessert menu appears, and wow, what was your main course like, Campervan? Oh, it was gorgeous, <laughs> lovely, mm. tasty. Apart from the peas, my starter was, but my starter was just perfect. And oh yeah, yeah. It's lovely. Yeah, it's a good restaurant, the Heart in Hartwell. Really enjoying it. Now the dessert menu has come. <laughs> Camper Van K is having a is it a sticky toffee pudding? No, it's a chocolate fudge cake. Chocolate fudge cake, I beg your pardon. And I'm having New York cheesecake with oh my goodness, what is that? Chocolate ice cream <laughs> wow <laughs> it's a sculpture mm. well, what a great restaurant this has turned out to be it's been lovely and the meals spot on like mm. camper van k asked for a fork <laughs> And started to explain to me why she wanted a fork, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, complete disinterest in uh, anything about why she wanted a fork. And now I'm living the dream of not having a fork because it's the last mouthful, and I have to chase it around the plate. And But the edge of the plate isn't that steep, so I, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I've decided to uh, use gravity. Just scoop up all the sauce and then use the lip at the edge and I've got it <laughs> now the boots on the other foot Cameron K I can scoff at why you need a fork for the last mouthful and it goes like this <laughs> nice <laughs> Well, Camp Van K, that was a great meal, great laugh, good company. Thank you very much. And Thank I've, you. <laughs> yeah. And um, I've had enjoyed some great meals in great company with other van lifers and subscribers. You got James there, you got Nomadic Kangoo there. Subscribe to Camp Van K there, subscribe to me there, or well, that might be someone else.